Yep, there we go. All right, thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. As far as I can tell, everyone is here and present on their mat. Uh, if not, you'll catch up. So as you can see, I don't have any props with me, but if you have props that you would like, um, you can go ahead and collect those now. If you like to have a blanket for Shavasana, you can have a blanket for Shavasana. Um, if you don't, you don't, and that's just it. Just double checking to make sure my ear, earbuds are plugged in. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna start on our backs today. So you can go ahead and lay on down. And when you come onto your back, go into a position that makes you feel most comfortable. So for some of you, that's gonna be legs long. Nice. For those of you who have lower back uh, fun time, right? If you have feeling sensation in your lower back when you lay down at the legs long, you can bend your knees, plant your feet, bring the inner knees to touch and walk the feet out wide. And so this is active or constructive rest. And the idea is that you're not using any muscular engagement to keep your legs in place. So this is not a pulling of the knees in together, but rather a resting point, like you would build a house of cards. You find that magical distance, the base of the cards away from each other. The same thing with the feet. Spread them out as wide as they need to go or as narrow, or as far away from the feet as they need to go. I'm gonna allow your eyes to close. Soften the place between the brow. Release the jaw. And soften the throat. And start to deepen the breath, smooth, steady, and even. If you're well practiced with diaphragmatic breathing, you'll know that when you inhale, you invite the belly to rise and broaden. But if you're not sure if you're breathing down into the stomach, just bring the hands into the belly, let the elbows stay on the floor. So less engagement, and just breathe into the hands. And as you breathe into the hands, invite the inhale down deep and wide. And start to exhale nice and long. We'll get right into it today. Start to count the inhale. And match that count on the exhale. Same count, inhale. Same count, exhale. And the style of breath work is called Samavritti, and your even cycles of breath. And imagine that rather than having inhale and exhale like a piston moving through the body, that it's more like a cycle that's continuous, fluid, and smooth.
And we'll take three more breaths here, body as soft as possible. Awareness is on the evening and deepening of the breath. Same length, same speed. And after your last exhale, gently draw one knee and then the next into the chest. Give the knees a squeeze. Start to rock the knees side to side or around in circles, whatever feels most nourishing to you. So know that if it were humanly possible, I would always cue that breath while I was also talking about the body, but not only is that physically impossible for me to say two things at once, but also it'd be terribly confusing for you all. So know that your work today is to stay with the sum of Rishi, the even cycles of breath. I'll be reminding you as much as possible, but just know that that's where you need to keep yourself accountable today. So start to rock the knees side to side and separate the hands, one hand on one kneecap, one hand on the other, and start to go wide with the knees. So separating the knees out, going wide, rocking yourself side to side, and start to allow yourself to really rock side to side uh, not that you're rocking into a spinal twist, but that you're starting to rock like you're a, a turtle on his back. Or like a beetle that flipped over. So you really start to go side to side, almost rolling into fetal position on one side and then rolling onto your back and rolling over to the other side. And as you rock side to side, and especially when you rock through middle, start to pull the knees apart so that you feel tension in the inner groin. And then as you rock onto fetal position, the knees come back together. Good. Take one more rock side to side, each side. And beetle on its back or turtle on its back. And when you land on your left hand side, let yourself land fully in fetal position. If it feels like the head is falling off a cliff, when you drop it down towards the floor, you can pad up the head with the left arm. Tent onto fingertips with the right hand in front of the face. And then start to creepy crawl, or what I like to call Adam's family, the right hand up towards the, we're going to call it the back of your room. Once you get to the right hand reaching up and overhead, pause here and reach vigorously with the right hand towards the back of your mat. And then reach your right hip away. You're actively lengthening the right side of the waist. And then start to open up the right armpit towards the ceiling and very slowly reach the right arm to the right. You're going to make a big circle. You can, keep the, you can keep creepy crawling the hands if you like the Adam's family analogy, but start to make a really big circle with the right arm. Right arm sweeps down towards the front of your yoga mat, comes back onto your right hip, and then back in front of your face. So making really big circles, if you're to see yourself from the ceiling, maybe drawing a big circle around your torso, your head, like a little angel, making a big circles, twisting and untwisting. If you have any kind of shoulder injury and this is really aggravating to you, you can just keep your hand on your hip and just open and close. Two more big circles like this. Notice if you've lost the breath already, come back into it. And then the next time the right hand comes back to the right hip, bring the right hand onto the right knee, collect the right knee, come through center, and simply rock over to the other side. So rolling onto your right hand side now. Again, pat up underneath the right, <laughs> right side of your head if that's appropriate for you. And tent on the left hand fingertips in front of the face. Arm is nice and long. And start to creepy crawl. Adam's family sweep the left arm up. Pause when the left arm is reaching towards the back of your yoga mat. Actively shift your left hip away from the left hand. So lengthen the side of the waist. Slowly start to open the left armpit towards the sky and sweep yourself out and wide. 
sweeping the left hand down, starting with our big wide circles again. So again, if you have a sh shoulder issue on the left side, same thing, you'll bring your left hand to your left hip and you'll just open and close like a little clamshell. Breath is smooth, even, deep. Take one more full circle here. And when you come back through center, bring your left hand onto your left knee, collect the left knee, come through center. One hand on each knee, draw the knees in tighter. Take your hands off your knees, bring them onto the floor, and then flex into the feet, right? get really active into the ankles and start to lift just the soles of the feet towards the sky, but keep the knees pulling in towards the chest. So imagine that you could plug your knees into your armpit. If you just rolled your eyes, okay? The pelvis will lift off the floor just a touch, especially if you're really pulling in. Flex into the feet even more. Take the arms up towards the ceiling like you wanted to grab onto the ceiling. And then from here, peel the head, neck, and chest up off the floor. Start to reach the arms to the gateway of the leg. Good. Yeah, through the gateway of the legs, Lou. Good. Pull the knees down even more. It should feel pretty challenging. Knees are bent, so pull your knees in, Jane. Bend the knees even more. Yes, yeah. It's super weird. Yeah, kind of like happy baby, but you're not holding on to it. It's a little bit more active. Pretend like you had to talk while you're doing this, so you're breathing. Good. Take one more inhale. Hi. <laughs> Exhale, release. Let the feet land on the earth, either an active rest or let the legs go long, whatever feels nicest for you. Pause, close the eyes, notice physical sensations. Breathe even, deep, and smooth. One more full breath here. Body soft. From here, one knee and the next into the chest. Again, you're gonna, without your hands, pull your knees in tighter, out and wide. So pull the knees in towards the armpits, flex into the feet. We're coming back into that same shape. Really just embodying the like turtle on its back thing today. Knees down into the armpits, reach the arms up towards the ceiling. And then again, head, neck, chest, peel up. Imagine you're reaching for something through the gateway of the legs. Pull the knees in tighter. Good, yeah, if you're feeling this in your uh, hip, great. Good, bend the knees, pull the knees in tighter like they could plug in like little plugs and sockets. Nice, Pat, good. Yeah, some of you are like, I wanna to touch my feet. Take one more inhale, exhale, release. Feet to the floor, however feels nicest for you, legs long or not. Breathe, notice sensation. Right, notice an ability or inability to come to a full stop right after engagement. Right, and then last time, one knee and the next into the chest without hands, right, and employ the abdomen. Pull the knees in, flex into the feet, soles of the feet towards the sky. So again, it's like happy baby without the legs. Super fun, right? So glad I can't hear your responses. Reach the hands up towards the ceiling like you wanted to grab onto the ceiling and then peel head, neck, and chest up off the floor. Reach the gateway of the leg. For some of you, the uh, outer knees might be pressing into the triceps. Don't press super hard. Reach for the feet. Reach, 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 reach. Good, breathe nice and full. From here, take your hands to the outside of the feet but keep the knees on the outside of the triceps. Yeah and then release the head and come into happy baby. And as you come into happy baby, you're pulling on the feet down, plugging the knees in towards the armpit. And then for some of you, it's gonna feel really nice to rock side to side. If you'd like to lengthen one leg and then the next, you may do so. 
know that when I say lengthen, I almost rarely mean straighten. So a generous bend of the knee is helpful here. And then also breathe, right? so many things. And from here, release the feet onto the earth. Imagine you could step them close to your seat and in a hip width distance apart. Know that when I say hips, I mean bones, not flesh. Step into the feet, lift the pelvis up and forward. Imagine you could direct the pelvis away from you. This is not about the back bend. This is about relieving the front of the hip crease. So if you find yourself really jutting the pelvis towards the sky, soften it down. Imagine that from inner knees to pelvis to heart could be one straight line. Step down into the feet. Imagine you could drag the feet towards the head here so get a little traction. Take one more inhale. And exhale, slowly release the spine, pelvis down. From here, we're gonna make our way into tabletop. So I know a lot of you like to rock and roll in the direction of the spine. Some of you, you like to roll to the side and come up. Take your time getting there. Good. When you come into tabletop, you're gonna come right into cat and cow. So try not to be like super smart about anything. Just close the eyes, count the breath, round and extend the spine. So again, resist the urge to do anything really specific. Just let yourself move the spine. If you're not counting the breath, start to count the breath again and let the movement be a lot slower, almost luxurious. Good. Yeah, if you wanna to start to move your hips and ribs in circles or around, if you'd like to press back to child's pose, this is really like a, a DIY, choose your own adventure experience for right now. We're going to start to come into a neutral spine. And if you have a yoga block near you, this uh, next thing is really fun to do with a yoga block because it kind of keeps you accountable. If you don't have a block, but you have like a book or maybe, I don't know, a Tupperware container nearby, you can pop it right on your back. So you'll come into tabletop, you'll pop the block right onto your sacrum. Those of you who come to my class on Cape Cod, I know you all love this. <laughs> Good. Okay, so once you've got your yoga block, pull the navel up and in, and imagine that you could cement your torso in space. All right, so ideally, my whole torso, my arms, not gonna change. Pull your right heel in towards your glute, like you're trying to squeeze something between your thigh and your calf. Good. Those of you with the block, you'll know that if you lift up too high, the block is just gonna tumble off. So those of you without a block, pretend like you're holding something like really valuable on your sacrum as you lift the leg up. And then notice if you've started to back bend here and sink into the shoulders, push the earth away, pull the navel in. Good. And then from here, you'll start to draw the right knee out to the right like you're a dog peeing in a fire hydrant. Good. And it's gonna be, I hesitate to use the word circles because it's not really a circle but you're just going to move the right knee around, squeezing the, hip, the heel towards the glute <clears throat> without dropping your block or without dropping your imaginary, let's call it like a tray of margaritas, wine, whatever. <laughs> really slow, going to the edges of where it feels comfortable to do this. Notice the tendency for the left arm to start to bend and sag. Right, left your right, let your right hip be your right hip. Uh, start to reverse the direction of the circles. <clears throat> and it should feel kind of arduous. So if you're like, why is this so hard? It's because it is. And if it's not hard, make your circles bigger, but stay in control of the torso. 
Good, nice guys. Add one more circle this direction. And then pause, drop the knee down. If you still have a block on your sacrum, you can keep the block here for a moment and see if it will stay as you sink hips back towards heels, come to child's pose, tense on the fingertips, relieve the front of the wrist. As you come to child's, let the head drop. If it feels nice to you to sway side to side, it might feel nice. As you sink into child's pose, feel for a lengthening of the hips away from fingertips and fingertips away from hips. So we're really long here. Yeah, those of you with the challenge of keeping the block on the sacrum, you'll press into the shins, come up really slowly. Those of you who don't, just pretend. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. If this is aggravating your wrist at all, you can come to fist. Know that this is not about the wrist, but the hips. And from here, if you lost your block, replace it. Pull the left heel in towards the left glute as if you're holding something between the left thigh and left calf. Good. Pull the navel in. Push the earth away. Watch your right arm move. As you lift, yeah, lift the left knee nice and slow and start to circle the left knee out to the left without rocking to the right side, without bending into the right, uh, right elbow. Good. Squeeze the left heel in towards the left glute. Nice, Dave. Look at those hips go. That's what you get when you pay money for them, right? <laughs> Good. Pull the navel in. Right now, there's a tendency to back bend when you lift the left knee. Good. Reverse the direction of the circles. Notice what happened to the breath. Pull the navel in. Check the right arm out. If the right elbow is bending, taking over control of the left hip. And one more circle this direction. Pause, let the left knee drop. Widen out the knees just a touch. Sink the hips back towards the heels. Pop onto fingertips, relieve the front of the wrist. Nice and long in the torso. Fingertips and hips reach in opposite directions. Breath is nice and smooth here. And if you find yourself sort of flitting around with the mind into past, present, future, anything that doesn't have to do with what's happening right now, count the breath when we're in these passive places, but there'll be times in the practice where we stop and pause. One more full breath here. Good. Start to press into the shins. <clears throat> Come back up to tabletop. If you have a block on your back, you can just toss it to the side. It's really satisfying just to like really toss it with your actual hips after that, if you're feeling angsty. Scoot yourself back towards the back of the mat. <clears throat> yeah. So like feet are kind of off the back of your mat. If that's not possible for you, just, you know, ignore it. I see that you have a table there, Jane. Don't kick the table. <laughs> Good. Pull the right heel in towards the right glute. <clears throat> so we just talked about how to keep the body really stable as we move around the rotation of the hip mobility. We're now going to sort of ignore a lot of things I just said, and you're going to draw the right hip around in a really big circle. You're going to tent onto fingertips, lean back, and swipe the right leg in front of the left. I say swipe. It could be like grab, drag, or a little bit different than that. Walk the hands a little bit farther forward. Pull the left uh, knee up, out, over, make a big circle, involve the rest of the body, and then swipe left leg in front of, right. And you're going to start to, yeah, you're going to start to crawl up your yoga mat with these really wide, big hip circles, crossing the legs as you go. This is why we had to go to the back of the mat. Good. And as you go around in these circles and you cross your legs, see if you can still employ that same sensation of control. And then when you get to the top of your mat, you're just gonna go in reverse. Yeah. Right, notice, notice the tendency you wanna go really fast. Can you go a little bit slower? Can you still squeeze the heel in towards the glute? Good. 
Can you still pull the navel in? Nice, Pilar. Good. When you get to the back of the yoga mat, pause. When you're at the back of the yoga mat and you pause, just notice what knees in front. Start to press the hips back towards uh, the back of your room. And there's gonna be sort of this point where you're like, oh gosh, I am stretching. So you're gonna just go to there. And it's gonna look different for everyone. Hips pressed back, front knee might lift, might not. You can let the head drop. I like to sort of wiggle my hips side to side here. Breath is nice, nice, steady, and even. And start to come back up, press into the shins, and just switch what leg is in front. So take one big circle, lift the back leg, bring it to the front, press the hips back. Find your stretch on this side. Again, it looks really different for everyone because it has really nothing to do with your ability as a yogi or how flexible you are, but a lot about sort of the uh, positioning of your bones, right? The greater trochanter and the top of the femur head and the hip socket. Good, breathe yourself nice and wide. Imagine that you could breathe down and bypass the lungs and breathe into the back of the pelvis and out wide into the outer hips where you're feeling sensation. Good. Start to press down into the bottom shin, come up and forward. We're going to take two, I don't know what to call this, weird, wonky, slinky, cross-legged walks up to the middle of the yoga mat. And when your right leg is in front, you'll pause. So when the right knee is the knee that you see when you look down, that's when you pause. Good. Beautiful. From here, walk your hands a little bit farther forward. Good. Tip forward so you can find your toes. Press the toes into the floor, come up and back, cross-legged downward facing dog. So those of you who practice with me a lot, you'll recognize cross-legged downward facing dog for what it is. It's just a dog with the legs crossed. For those of you who are like, I don't know what's happening, bend your knees into each other. So bend the back knee into the front. Keep the balls of the feet on the earth. And then from here, lift your fist bones, lift your butt bones up towards the sky, keeping the bend of the knee. Beautiful. And imagine I were there and I were pressing my hand into your lower back, pressing back and up. So lift the hips up even higher. Yes, that's it, Lou. Beautiful. From here, shift forward towards plank pose with legs crossed, squeeze the inner thighs in. The back foot is going to want to lift off the ground. See if you can keep the ball of the foot there. Pull the navel in. The pelvis is going to be really buoyant. So it's not the top of a push up. Good. Bend the knees, come up and back. Good. Look back at your feet. Take your back foot, it's your left foot, and just step it in front of the right. So now left knee is the knee that you see. Beautiful. Bend the knees, bend the back knee into the front knee, lift the hips up and back in space, pull the navel in, look forward towards the hands, come forward, plank pose. Good, push the earth away. Pelvis is really buoyant. So if you look at my pelvis, this isn't a top of a push up. it's like not even close. Good, navel in, bend knees, come up and back. Beautiful. From here, take your right leg, step it in front of your left leg. We're gonna start to make the down dog a little bit shorter. Left leg steps in front of right leg. Kind of like you're taking a really slow, sassy walk towards the top of the mat. Start to uh, pop onto fingertips. Keep crossing the legs. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Good. And then from here, step the right foot next to the left foot. Let's call it normal. Good. And then bring your feet to a two fist width distance apart. So that's two fists, like your fist bumping the floor. Bend into the knees really deeply. Good. Yeah, some of you went real deep. Good. You can release the measurement if you've got it. And when you bend the knees really deeply, notice the proximity of armpits and knees. Right, I say notice, and I'm, I'm not saying it needs to be there. If your torso is landing on the thighs, let the head hang heavy. And then from there, 
lift the hip crease up towards the sky without losing contact. Good. Take the hands onto the shins. Inhale, come up half the way, broaden the collarbone. Exhale, bend the knees even further, drape and fold. Inhale, step into the feet, sweep the arms all the way up, reach up. All right, exhale, hands into heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms out wide and high, reach up, look up with the gaze. As you exhale, sink the hips back in space like you're trying to find a chair with your butt. Good. Inhale, broaden the collarbone, lift. Exhale, fold over bent knees. Let the arms graze down towards the floor. Keep the legs bent in chair pose. Inhale, unhinge from chair, lift the chest up. Good. Exhale, come to stand, arms drop down. Good. Inhale, sweep the arms up, gaze up. Exhale, sit into chair, broad collarbones. Inhale, lift the gaze, broaden the collarbones even more. Exhale, fold over bent knees, don't change the legs, arms sweep down. Inhale, unhinge, back into your chair pose. Exhale, come to stand, arms sweep down. Inhale, arms sweep up, broaden collarbones, lift the gaze. Exhale, sit back into chair. Inhale, lift the heart, bottom collarbone. Exhale, fold over bent knees. If I'm going too fast for you, I'm going too fast for you, go slow. Vice versa, if you know where we're going, you can go. Inhale, gaze lift. Exhale, come to stand. Good. Inhale, arms sweep, look up. Exhale, come to sit into chair. Inhale, bottom collarbone, gaze up. Exhale, fold over bent knees. Inhale, unhinge. So notice how it's just an unhinging. Good. As you exhale, come to stand. Arms drop, eyes close. Feel into the legs. Notice sensation. Notice the shift. Notice temperature. Start to regulate the breath if it went a little bit quicker. Feel into the feet. And gently blink the eyes open. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, fold all the way down. So I'm gonna bend into the knees as you go. Inhale, come up past the way. Exhale, plant the hands. Step, step back to plank pose. As you step back into plank pose, keep the pelvis buoyant again. Right, so we have the tendency in yoga to come to the top of a push up. That's fine. Right now, buoy up the pelvis so that the pelvic floor is pointing backwards towards the back of the room. Draw your heels back in space. And then imagine that you could take more energy out of your arms and into your legs. I say imagine because I'm doing it too. Don't worry, I know. Shorten up your plank a little bit, Lou. So walk your hands back or your feet forward. Yeah, there you go. Good. And then from here, this is the longest we'll hold plank, I promise. From here, pull the hand, the heels of the hands towards the toes, toes towards the heels of the hands, like you could make a crease in your mat. Might start a party. Good. Take an inhale here. Exhale, drop the knees down, fully drop the chest down, elbows point back in space. Bring the forehead down all the way to the floor. Walk the hands one pace back in space, press down into the feet, lift the head up half the way. So really, really low back then. Lift the hands off the floor. Take an inhale here. And as you exhale, slowly release yourself down. Good. Inhale, press into the feet. Use the legs, come up really low. Good, exhale to stay. Inhale, lift the hands, brought on the collarbone. And exhale, release. Press into the feet. Inhale, lift the head. Exhale to stay. Imagine you could pull navel to spine here. Inhale, lift the heart higher, lift the hands. Good, exhale, press into hands, press into knees, keep collarbones broad. Either shift back into downward facing dog or child's pose, just a place to regain your breath. So if you feel pretty cool with the breath, you'll go into down dog. 
If you feel like you're out of breath, you'll come into child pose. But somewhere where you can be and you feel relatively comfortable enough to count the breath. And not just counting for the sake of counting, but counting so that we can lengthen inhale and exhale. Good. And then once you've got the breath, especially if you're in child pose, you'll make your way into downward facing dog. And once you're in down dog, bend the knees, lift the hips. Yeah, imagine you're like booty bump in the ceiling. Yeah. Recall the sensation of reaching your hips away from your fingertips and your fingertips away from your hips. Recall that and activate that now. Good. Bend the knees a little bit, Pilar. Yeah, yes. There, perfect. Beautiful. From here, walk your feet over to the right-hand side of your mat. And take your right leg, step it in front of your left. So crossing the legs and downward facing dog again. Bend the knees into each other like they're little puzzle pieces and they fit in. Lift the hips up and back. Look forward towards the hands and it's your back leg, your left leg that will lift up towards the sky. Very slowly draw it through a knee to nose crunch and you're gonna step or step, step, step or grab, drag the left foot, step it forward. Yep, as you step the left foot forward, toe heel the left foot over to the right. If right and left aren't your thing, buckle up. <laughs> and back heel back in space, front knee forward. So we're crossing our legs in our lunge. Good. And then imagine you could squeeze the inner thighs in towards each other here. Good. So a cross-legged lunge, left leg, left foot over to the right. Good. Slowly land the back knee down. Good. Brought on the collarbone. Good. And then from here, imagine that you could step down into the front foot even more and direct the left knee to the right. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you feel stable, you rise. Right, just if you feel stable. Hands on the floor, amazing. Hands off the floor, also amazing. Good, pull the inner thighs in towards each other. Pull the navel in. Activate the outer hips, imagine you could squeeze in. Yeah, yeah, and if you're like, ooh, and balance is not your friend today, hands on floor. Cool. If you're balanced and you're up here, slowly come down, hands on the floor, lengthen the back leg. Good, look forward towards the top of your mat if you're not already. Step the right foot behind the left foot, cross-legged Uttanasana forward fold the top of your mat. Right leg steps behind left, there you go, good. I like to stagger my feet here so I still have play with the knees. Right, check in with the back leg, it's now your right leg. If the right leg is completely straight and you're snapping the back of the knee towards the back of the room, bend it. Yeah, some of you have blocks, if you wanna have blocks here you can. Pull the inner thighs in towards each other. Feel into the feet. Bring the hands onto the shins or the blocks. Inhale, come up half the way. Good, exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Squeeze in towards the midline to come all the way up. Sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands into heart center. Good. Recall coming into cross-legged plank. Do that with your legs now. There we go. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, bend into the knees to drape and fold all the way down. Good. Inhale up half the way, whatever that means for you, broaden the collarbones. Good. Exhale, back leg moves to the left-hand side of the mat. So coming back into that same lunge we just were in on the bias crawl. Good. Plant the hands, step the left leg back. It's now the left knee that you see. Bend the knees, lift the hips. If you are like, ugh, too much, you're gonna stay in downward facing dog. If you would like a little bit more heat, you're gonna come forward, plank pose, squeeze in, heels back, heart forward. Navel in. Cool. Bend the knees, come up and back. And from here, look forward. Right leg, it's your back leg, it lifts. Right knee comes in through a uh, center. That's that word. <laughs> step it forward, step, 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 or grab, drag. And then toe heel the right foot over to the left. 
So we are crossing on the bias. Good. Step down into your right foot a little bit more, Pilar, so that the pelvis is a little bit more buoyant. Yes. Good. From here, slowly drop the left knee down. Good. And toes untucked, not tucked, it's up to you. Really put more weight into the right foot and drag the right knee towards the left-hand side of your mat. Step down into the front foot, get really solid. Hands can stay on the floor or blocks forever and always. But pull the inner thighs in towards each other. Squeeze the outer hips in. Pull the navel in. Right, and there's some days where like balance is not our friend. Good. Navel in. I can see you laughing, Liz. <laughs> it's amazing. Good. <laughs> Bring your hands down to the floor. Tent on the fingertips. Back leg lengthens. Step forward, left leg behind right. Again, stagger the feet as much as you need and a cross-legged forward fold so that the, bat, the knees can bend and you have a little play. Pull inner thighs in towards each other. Inhale, come up half the way, whether it's hands on shins or the blocks. Good, exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise, sweep all the way up. Hands in the heart center, reaffirm where your midline is, pull the navel in. Inhale, sweep the arms out wide and high. Exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, come up half the way, whatever that means for you today. Exhale, back leg moves to the right hand side of the mat, back where it just came from. Good, awesome. Yep, plant the hands, step right leg back, right knee is the knee that you see. So these are the Katona version of sun cells. A lot of you have practiced, practiced with me a lot in person. So if you are like ready to let it rip, you can let it rip. But I'm gonna instruct for those of you who are new to this or just feeling like you need to be led. So inhale, left leg, back leg, it moves, it lifts. Exhale, left knee draws through, knee to nose crunch, step it forward and to the right. Back knee grounds down, come to rise or not. Good, exhale, hands frame the front foot, step forward, forward fold, legs cross. Inhale, come up half the way. Exhale, fold. Inhale, squeeze in and rise, come all the way up. Exhale, hands into heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms out wide and high, reach. Exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, come up half the way. Exhale, back leg moves to the left-hand side of the mat. Find your lunge, good. Back knee grounds down or not, rise or not. Right, lots of options, no requirements. Good, plant the hands, left leg steps back, left knee is the knee that you see, cross-legged downward facing dog. Option to pull forward plank pose. Feet stay grounded, heels stay back. Exhale back to down dog if you were there. Right leg lifts, it moves, it steps forward to the left. Good. Back knee grounds down and rise or not. Squeeze in towards the midline, especially if you're flapping to keep yourself under control. Good. Hands plant, lengthen the back leg. Step up and forward, cross-legged, Uttanasana, forward fold. Step down into the feet, squeeze in, up half, inhale. Exhale, fold, right, we still have to breathe. <laughs> inhale, sweep all the way up, come all the way up, reach up, pull navel in. Exhale, reaffirm where your midline is, right? This is a visual cue, hands coming down to heart center. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up half. Exhale, back leg moves to the right-hand side of the mat. <clears throat> back knee grounds down or not, rise or not, your choice. Yeah, good. Hands plant, step back. Right leg is the knee that you see. Good, bend knees, come forward, plank pose or not. Bend knees, come back if you're there. Good, left leg, it's the back leg, it steps forward, cross-legged lunge. Good, I'll add in the option of not dropping the back knee down and rising, All right? If you're feeling really, whew, drop the back knee down, knee down, pull the navel in, outer hips in. Nice, drop the hands down, step forward, forward fold. 
Your inhale, come up half the way. Your exhale, fold. So I say your inhale, sweep up. Because I'm clearly not going to be able to talk. Exhale, hands in the heart center, according to your breath every single time. Good. Your inhale, sweep up. Your exhale, fold down. Your inhale, up half. Your exhale, back leg moves, it steps back to the right. <clears throat> Find your lunge as it is today. Hands could be down, knee could be down, or not. Good. From here, plant hands. Step left foot back, left knee is the knee that you see. Option to pull forward plank pose. Again, options, not requirements. If you're there, come back, down dog. Good. Right leg steps forward, cross leg in. Good. Find your lunge as it exists today with cross legs. Again, options, not requirements. Good, navel in, outer hips in, inner thighs in. Good, from here, hands plant, step forward. Inhale, come up half. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Exhale, hands in the heart center. Those of you really familiar with the Katona tradition, you can really let it rip here if you want to go fast. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up half. Exhale, back leg moves back to where it just came from. Find your lunge as, as it exists today. Good. Plant hands, step back, cross-legged dog. Pull forward, plank pose or not. Pull back, down dog if you're there. Good. Left foot steps forward. Find your cross-legged lunge as it exists today. Good. Once you're there, come out. Hands plant. Step forward. Inhale up half the way when you're there. Exhale, fold. Your inhale, sweep all the way up. Your exhale, hands in. Your inhale, sweep all the way up. Your exhale, fold down. Good. Your inhale, come up half the way. Your exhale, back leg moves to your cross-legged lunge as it is right now. Inner thighs in, outer hips squeeze. Good. Hands plant, step back, left knee is the knee that you see. From here, shift forward, plank pose or not. Good. From here, shift back, down dog if you're there. Beautiful. From here, walk your hands back towards your feet at the back of your mat, bend your knees if you do so. Invariably, we are going to need to adjust our feet, so step your foot down into your cross-legged Uttanasana. Again, staggering the feet, especially to get some play with the back of the knee. Good. If you have a block handy, now would be a great time to have it. If you don't have a block, a book gives you some height off the floor. From here, squeeze the inner thighs in. Bring your right hand, either on fingertips, a block, a cam, a book, whatever you have. Bring it onto the floor, bring the left hand onto the sacrum. Good. The left hand onto the sacrum or the pant line. Yeah, if you gotta go get it, you come back. Remember the left knee is in front. Good. From here, direct the left elbow up towards the sky. Squeeze the inner thighs in, right? We've got balance at play here. And imagine that you can start to broaden the collarbone towards the left hand side of your room. Squeeze in towards the inner thighs. Feel the feet cementing down, broaden the collarbones like you're coming into cow pose. If lifting the left arm doesn't really cause any kind of strife with your shoulder, your neck, you may lift the left arm. Don't do it though, just because I said it. Good. From here, slowly release. Bring the gaze back down to the floor. Sent on the fingertips. Step your right leg out wide and off your mat. Come into a wide-legged forward fold, but not as wide as you normally go. Just come into sort of like a half the way. Bend into the knees, drape and fold. The right leg is, right, right foot's off the mat, left foot's still on the mat. From here, come up half the way, tent on the fingertips. Exhale, fold. Shake out the head. Pour weight into the feet. Regulate the breath if it's not regulated. Use your count if you need to. Good. From here, come up half the way. Tent on the fingertips. 
Start to walk the fingertips back onto the mat, bend into the left knee, take the right leg, step in in front of the left. Good, so now the right foot is stepped in front of the left foot. There we go. Stagger the feet as you need so you have some play in the knees, right? If you can't bend your knees, stagger the feet. Good. From here, take a block, a block, um, a block. <laughs> Anything underneath your left hand that you have or not, punch on the fingertips. Right hand onto the sacrum. Good. That's your pant line. Direct the right elbow point up towards the sky. This should feel like a lot of constriction. So if in your room you're swearing at me and you're like, oh my God, that's because that's how it's supposed to feel. So right elbow up towards the sky. Start to broaden the collarbones towards the right hand side of your room. Imagine that you could broaden the collarbones like you're in cow pose here. Squeeze the inner thighs in, get really strong with the feet. If lifting the right arm is something that feels nice for you, do it. If it doesn't, doesn't and don't do it. And then imagine that you could also breathe. Very slowly shift the gaze down towards the floor, release the hands. Step into the right foot, step the left foot off the mat. Come into a wide-legged forward fold. Again, it's not the widest you can go, it's just wide-ish, wider than hip width. Subtle bend into the knees, let the torso drape and fold all the way down. Stake out the head. Core weight into the feet. Let the breath circulate around in the torso. One more full breath here. Tent high into fingertips. Pour weight into the left foot, the uh, right foot rather. Step the left foot on the mat, hips width distance apart. Inhale, come up half the way. Exhale, fold, and inhale, root to rise. Notice how strong the legs are as you step down, reach up. Exhale, hands into heart center. Good. Inhale, sweep the arms out wide and high. Exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, up half the way, broaden the collarbones. And exhale, make your way, downward facing dog. So notice how it feels to be a normal dog. Bend the knees, lift the hips. Good. Shift forward towards plank pose. Good. Activate all the things you needed to activate in a cross-legged plank here. Pull navel in, inner thighs in. Slowly release down to your belly. Knees first or not, your choice. Good. When you get down there, Inhale, lift the heart, the hands, press down into the tops of the feet. So use the legs to back bend. Inhale, yeah, come down off your hands, Jane. So come down and lift your hands off the floor. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, like you could do jazz hands in Cobra. Good, and then release all the way down. So drop one cheek to the mat, release the hands in a place that feels comfortable to you. Release the legs, shake the hips side to side. Yeah, full stop. Notice sensation. Notice the breath moving against the floor. Good, start to breathe a little bit deeper and notice how when you breathe deeper and you breathe down into the abdomen, you're not just breathing down into the floor, but you're breathing wide and into the back of the body. You can imagine you could feel yourself circumferentially. Good. All right, from here, walk your hands in line with the mid ribs. Press down into the feet and inhale, lift the heart, the head, the hands. Good. Pick up the elbow points even higher. Good. And then slowly sweep the arms back in space. You got it, Alyssa. Good. 
and then drop the heart down about half the way. So give yourself a little bit of room here. As you inhale, you're gonna lift the left leg. So lift from the inseam of the pants, lift the heart up higher. As you exhale, you'll soften the chest down half the way, left leg drops. Inhale, right leg, lift from the inseam of the pants, heart lift. Good, exhale, soften. Good, inhale, left leg, heart lift. Exhale, soften. Inhale, right leg. Notice how much of the back of the body you're employing here. Exhale, soften. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, soften. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, soften. This time, imagine you're holding a block between the heels as you inhale, lift both legs at the same time. Good. So imagine you're holding a block between your heels. Imagine all 10 toes could point down towards the ground. If you have room to flex into the feet and not hit the floor, flex into the feet and then extend the legs back in space. Good, take one more inhale. Exhale, release everything down. Soften the hips side to side. Full stop, breathe into the floor. Bring the forehead down onto the earth. Hands in line with the mid ribs. You're gonna make your way back to downward facing dog. So I say make your way because there's several different ways you can go. You can press yourself up through a plank. You can press yourself into upward facing dog. You can go through tabletop into child's pose. Just make your way into down dog in a way that feels nice for you. Good. From here, come high into tippy toes. Take a nice long walk to the top of your mat. Good. When you get there, supple bend in the knees. Let yourself drape and fold. Inhale, come up half the way. Employ the back of the body as you do so. Exhale, fold. Good. Inhale, root to rise. Sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands into heart center. Keep the hands here, close your eyes. With eyes closed, pull the navel in. Feel into the feet as two anchors, the legs as two pillars of strength. From here, gently blink the eyes open. Shift weight into your left foot, draw the right knee in to the chest. The right knee is into the chest. Imagine you could still activate the same way that you're pulling inner thighs in towards each other to do everything with your legs crossed. Same thing here, okay? Navel stays in, squeeze outer hips in. Put a nice bend into the left knee, right? Have some play, some buoyancy with the joints. Lou, this is gonna seem super familiar. You're gonna start to hinge at the hips. Keep the spine exactly as it is. Hinge at the hips, hinge at the hips. Keep the right heel pulling in towards the glute. All right, remember tabletop, good. When it feels like the torso is parallel, then you will extend the right leg back. As you extend the right leg back, the right toes drop down towards the ground. Yeah, again, if balance is not like really friendly with you today, you can bring your hands down onto blocks. But we're coming into warrior three with a bent standing leg and square hips. Good, from wherever you are, bend into the left knee even more, reach back in space with the right foot, let it land, high lunge, sweep the arms up. Good, exhale, hands frame the front foot, step back up, Uttanasana forward fold. Inhale, come up half the way. Exhale, fold. If you're really stuck on how you couldn't balance, I suggest you just forget it. Inhale, sweep the arms up. It's got no measure on how good or bad you are at yoga. Exhale, hands into heart center, close the eyes. With eyes closed, hands into heart center, feel into the feet. Imagine you could drop weight into the heels. Feel into the legs as two pillars of strength. Pull the navel in, gently open the eyes. Shift weight into the right foot. Draw the left knee into the chest. 
So it's all an experiment with gravity, right? Pull the inner thighs in towards each other, even though they're separate. Bend into the standing leg, buoyancy. Good, start to hinge at the hips. Hinge at the hips, hinge at the hips. Like you're folding forward, but you're like a little flamingo when you do so. Good. You'll get to a place where you don't want to drop the torso anymore. Broaden the collarbones. Extend the left leg back in space. As you extend the left leg back in space, all five left toes pointing down towards the ground. There's a bend in the standing leg. Right, to get some buoyancy, some play. Broaden the collarbones, lift the gaze, lift the heart like you had to do on the floor when you're coming into Shalambhasana or Locust Pose. Yeah, I see a lot of you doing variations with your arms, amazing. Good, wherever you are, bend into the standing leg even more. Really slow descent, left foot finds the back of the mat. Inhale, arms reach up. Good, exhale, hands plant, step back, downward facing dog. Good. From here, with super strong legs, stay on the balls of the feet, come forward, plank pose. Staying on the balls of the feet, resist gravity as you drop your pelvis down and you broaden your collarbones, upward facing dog on the balls of the feet. Good. Broaden collarbones even more. Pelvis really buoyant. Good. Bend the knees, come back down dog. Beautiful. Inhale, come forward, upward facing dog on the balls of the feet. Use the power of the legs. Exhale, bend knees, come back. Good, once more, inhale, come forward. Legs so strong, pelvis really buoyant, broad collarbones, balls of the feet. Good, exhale, come back, down dog. And this time, come forward, plank pose. And this time, down to your bellies, your choice, knees first or not. Last belly down, back bend, your choice. Cobra. Shalambhasana, whatever feels nice. Good. Go to a place where you can still breathe. Good. One more inhale. And exhale, release. One cheek lands. Arms soft. Legs soft. Allow yourself to be breathed rather than being the one breathing. From here, don't think too much, just slip onto your back like a pancake. Good, when you come onto your back, you're gonna take your right knee into the chest. Bend into the left knee, plant the left foot on the earth. We have two options here, and I'll sort of talk you through it and show you, and then you can decide what you wanna do. But you're either going to come into a figure four with the right heel on the left thigh. You can hold onto the left leg. If you were in class last week or you've been in class with me, I don't know how long I've been obsessing over active range of mobility, but you can keep the hands down on the floor to work a more active range. Or you can cross the legs totally and pull the, pull the legs in. Whatever feels nice for your right hip is where you go. And the breath is smooth and even here. So you're counting and lengthening the breath. Yeah, if you want to like move the hips side to side, you can move the hips side to side. If you're really still, see if you can feel for the sacrum dropping down into the floor. Good, and then from here, let your left foot find the earth. Good. With the left foot on the earth, drop the whole package of the legs, 
over to your left. Good. We're coming into a twist. Those of you in figure four, you might want to keep figure four. You might want to stack the knees. But if you came into this twist and something yelled at you right away, unwrap the legs and just come back into a twist that we found in the beginning of our time together. And then notice how much more ease you can have here. See if you can find more grace, more softness here. And continue to regulate the breath. Right. If the legs are wrapped, unwrap the legs. Right knee, then left knee, come through the chest and into center. Right. And then from here, left knee comes in, right foot steps on the floor. And you do not have to do the same thing that you did on the other side. Know that we're looking for symmetry in sensation, not the actual posture. So if for you, on the first side, you had figure four, but figure four on the left side doesn't feel nice, but this does, go for it, right? So this is where you feel most comfortable in stretching and relieving the outer left hip. Right, again, if you want to find active range of motion, you can find active range of motion. If you'd like to move around, you can move around. If you're still and holding on to the legs, see if you can find more softness in the back of the pelvis. Breathe nice and even and smooth here. If you're still in passive, notice the mind's tendency to leave and go elsewhere. Bring it back by counting the breath. Slowly step the right foot down on the floor. Keep the legs as they are. Drop the whole package of the legs over to the right. Good. Nice, guys. Again, stack or don't stack the knees as you wish. If you're in figure four and you want to keep it in figure four as it drops, so it might sound nice. Again, if something like screams out at you the moment you come into this position, just adjust. Again, see if you can find more softness here. More space for the breath to move around. And from here, it's the left knee that comes in. If the legs are wrapped, and wrap them. Left knee, then right knee comes up through the center. If there's any one last thing that you absolutely need to, need to do before we come to Shavasana, now would be the time to do so. That includes putting on socks and sweatshirts and pillows and blankets. And allow yourself to create conditions for comfort in the same way that you create conditions for effort, work, achievement. Good night. <laughs> Good. And once you come down, if you're not there, don't rush. But once you come down, allow the eyes to close. Again, the legs go to the place that's most comfortable for you. So, pat up underneath the knees, come into active rest. Nice. Let the eyes drop back in the skull. Soften the place between the brows. Soften the backs of the ears. Notice the breath. And again, if your mind 
tends to be active when the body becomes more passive. Use the tool of the breath to keep you here, embodied in your rest. As you soften the shoulders, you release the abdomen, drop the pelvis, soften the legs. Release any gripping, any resistance to gravity. Again, you can use the breath this entire time. If rest comes naturally to you, allow yourself to rest. Make sure to bring your awareness back into your body.
Invite the breath back in, inhaling a little bit deeper. <laughs> and start to make some movements around fingers, toes, wrists, and ankles. And start to make your way up into a seat, taking your time. <coughs> and as you make your way into your seat, see if you can keep the face soft, the eyes soft. And with eyes closed, feel the pelvis heavy, crown of the head elevated. And bring the hands to heart center. Drop the gaze down over fingertips in deep gratitude to you for the ability, the willingness, the privilege to practice. And for a moment, send out a sort of wave of thanks. Thanking anyone who has allowed you to come here, whether it be the person who in introduced you to the practice, someone who allows you to be here right now, taking time for yourself. Thanking your teachers, your teachers' teachers. Just a wave of thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy the thumb knuckles to the eye center, lift the head up. And for me to you, Namaste. 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 Oh, you've been unmuted. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Bye. Bye.